Hi, Empress Justice for Real Justice Tarot here. Now, I am going to be doing a Zodiac post, but it's not going to be the one that you're used to with the lunar readings. What I'm actually going to do is explain why you don't like different signs. Now, you see multiple videos of people cussing out different signs, saying that this, that, and the third, but what about the people who don't like particular signs? Let's turn the lens back on the people who insult the signs, okay? So first off, I am going to start with Aries. So if you have a problem with Aries, you have a problem with walking your talk. You have a problem with being yourself. Now, the thing about Aries is that everybody gets it twisted that Aries are just these loud, raucous people who just go around bossing people about, but that's not the case. The thing about Aries is that whether they're quiet, whether they're loud, whether they're, you know, flirty, whether they're, you know, whether they're tough, it doesn't matter what they are. They are that way authentically. What you see with an Aryan is what you get with an Aryan. So it doesn't matter what type of Aryan you're dealing with. They are who they are. That is the true marker of an Aryan person. Everything that you're seeing is what you're getting. And if you have a problem with an Aryan, then you have a problem walking your talk and ensuring that what you say you mean. So that's what that's what basically it reveals about you if you have a problem with an Aryan. If you have a problem with a Taurus, the fact of the matter is you have a problem with personal boundaries. Now, Taurians like to get up in everybody else's business, but when it comes to their own business, they've got that shit locked tight. They have certain boundaries that they don't cross. There are certain things that they don't do when it comes to work. Yes, they will work hard and they will do everything to the best of their ability, but there's a time to work, a time to rest, a time to play. And nine times out of ten, you're not going to shift a Taurian out of that. They've got a very strict schedule. They know how to close off their boundaries. They know when to cut something off. And if you've got a problem with the Taurian, then you don't know how to do that. You don't know how to fix your boundaries. You don't know how to say, oh, you know, I'm not OK with this. Instead, Either you let people run roughshod all over you or you go in the opposite direction and you'll try to be overly bossy for no real reason. So if you've got a problem with the Taurus, you've got a problem with boundaries and you've got a problem with actually saying what it is that you want and sticking to it. If you've got a problem with the Gemini, you have a problem with your own thought processes. You have a problem with the way that you think. Maybe you overthink about your thoughts. Maybe when you're thinking about something, you don't just let it pass by. You have to analyze it. You have to pick it apart. Or you're overly rigid with what you think and what you feel. And you don't accept the fact that changes happen all the time. Gemini is the quintessential mutable sign. Because not only is it mutable, it's also air. So it's constantly moving. You have a problem with accepting new things. You have a problem with... You might even have a problem with listening to other people. So if you have a problem with Gemini, you have a problem with listening, you have a problem with your own thought processes, and you can't handle anybody who is able to change their mind because we all change our minds. You've got a problem with cancer. If you have a problem with cancer, you have a problem with your own feelings, you don't allow yourself to feel, and you don't accept the fact that feelings are irrational. Everything has to have a reason for it. And vulnerability, low-key, people stereotype cancers as being crybabies because cancers are perfectly okay with being vulnerable. But we seem to get it twisted that just because cancers are okay with being vulnerable, it means they're weak. Not the case. But people who have a problem with cancers, they do have a problem with vulnerability. They do have a problem with their emotions. They have a problem with feeling things. And... Yeah, that's basically what it boils down to. You have a problem with being able to feel things and you can't handle the fact that feelings are irrational for the most part. Now, when it comes to Leo, one of my favourite signs, not going to lie. If you have a problem with a Leo, then you want attention, but you're not saying anything. <laughs> People who have, have problems with Leo... They usually want attention and don't say anything. They usually want to say exactly what's on their mind with no filter, but they don't say anything. Instead, they let, them get, they let themselves get run roughshod 
by stronger or more dominant people. But what people don't understand about dominant people is that they're very soft inside. So whenever you're around somebody dominant, you might feel weak or you might feel like, oh, this person's telling me what to do. They might be, but what about you? Like if somebody's being overly bossy, what about you turning around and saying, you know what, I'm not comfortable with that, knock it off. A Leo knows how to do that. So people who have problems with Leos, you have problem owning your you have problems owning your shine you have problems standing up for yourself you have problems recognizing your own personal world because that's what leo is all about so you got a problem with leo you got a problem with your own personal world you got a problem with joy as well you're afraid to be happy so in a nutshell you got a problem with leo you're afraid to be happy you're afraid of your own authority and you're afraid to stand up for yourself. If you can't stand a Virgo, you are not self-aware. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that even if you are aware about your own faults, you'll softball it in order to make yourself feel better. If people who have a problem with Virgos, I find, are unable to look at themselves critically and really sit down and think, okay, what exactly do I need to be doing here? How can I make my life better? How can I change up my daily routine? In fact, the daily routine might actually bore you. Daily routine might bore you. You might not like confrontation very much. Now, Virgos don't like confrontation either. But like we, we literally are able to see an obstacle immediately. But instead of confronting it head on, we kind of pick it apart. If you can't stand a Virgo then you have a very, you most likely have a very extreme way of dealing with your obstacles. Either you will kind of try to ram into them or you'll just back away completely. So if you're, you have a problem with Virgos, you have a problem with confrontation, especially with people that you immediately don't like. And, you know, yeah, you have a problem with immediately with people you don't like and you're not honest with yourself. You're not honest about your flaws and what you need to change. If you've got a problem with the Libra, You want to be liked. Hmm. I said what I said. If you got a problem with Libra, you want to be liked. You want to be considered to be a good person. And it frustrates you that a Libra sign is able to get what they want, manipulate, charm, flirt, even argue. And people will kind of fall all over them. You want their charm, but you feel like you don't have it. So instead of really examining it, you subconsciously bring toxic Libras into your life who represent everything that you convince yourself Libras are. So with you now, anybody who doesn't like Libras, I find that they have a problem with being persuasive. I find that they don't bother being persuasive because they like to get the worst of themselves out there first for people to consume so that when people don't like them, they don't feel so bad when they don't like them. That's your problem if you don't like a Libra. If you don't like a Scorpio, you're low-key sick of yourself. Because while Scorpio doesn't re reveal your subconscious, that's Pisces, Scorpio reveals your psychological processes. Nine times out of ten, when I've had a problem with a Scorpio, I realise it's because any toxic relationship I've had with Scorpios, it reflected my own way of dealing with my flaws. It, reflect it reflected my own way of dealing with my internal dialogue. That internal, that internal dialogue, needless to say, got pretty goddamn nasty, okay? So if you have a problem with Scorpio, you're low-key sick of yourself, and you probably attack yourself with your internal dialogue every fucking day. You also might have a problem with the deeper nature of life. It's, it's one thing to have a problem with the Taurus and, you know, and think that certain things are just a bit beneath you, but with Scorpio... You have a problem with refinement. You have a problem with looking deeper into things in order to find what you need to find. So you might be scared of the deeper side of life, to be honest with you, if, you're, if you don't like Scorpio. You don't like Sagittarius. I'm having trouble with this one. <laughs> If you don't like Sagittarius, then you're probably not very open-minded, probably very closed-minded. You're probably a bit too trend-orientated. 
and you're not focused enough on your own individual expression, you're probably way too focused on, you know, what's current and what's new and what's happening and you're not focused enough on what's lasting. Now, I know Sagittarians are not normally the sign associated with things that last, but Sagittarians are all about wisdom that has stood the test of time, which is why usually when a Sagittarian starts talking, they usually write about things because where they get their knowledge from is not from what people think is cool at the time. It's from lessons and teachings that have stood the test of time. So if you have a problem with Sagittarius, then you're probably not that deep as a person. Now, I'm not saying Sagittarians are necessarily deep. They're not necessarily like that deep, but they're certainly deep enough to see things the way they are sometimes and call it out. If you've got a problem with the Capricorn, you've got a problem with work. You've got a problem with work. You've got a problem with responsibility because the thing about Cappies is that, for me, for instance, I've had a problem with Cappies in the past. And every time I did, you know, I the biggest problem that I found with Cappies is that they used to whine a lot about things that they had to do. They used to complain a lot. And at the time, I'm thinking, I ain't feeling this. And on top of that, they seem to have a really lousy temper because they're holding a lot inside. But this is the thing about people who don't like Cappies. You don't like responsibility. You don't like work. And you certainly don't accept that sometimes you have to keep your feelings inside you you know sometimes you have to have a little bit of self-control and what i found with people who don't like capricornians and i I say that about myself too they do not have a lot of self-control if they don't like capricornians they don't have self-control they don't have a sense of it's not that they don't have dignity it's just that they don't they don't value what it means to be a productive member of society or, you know, within the human race as a whole. You probably don't know what your career, what career you want to do. You're probably be quite aimless if you don't like a Capricorn. You don't like an Aquarius. You don't accept your place in the world. You have trouble thinking about other people because Aquarians are my jam. Like tropical Aquarians especially are my jam right here because Aquarians... They have a sense of who they are already or not necessarily who they are, but what their destiny is. They're born knowing what they're here for. Aquarians are born knowing that whatever their purpose in life is, it doesn't revolve around what other people tell them it is. Sure, they're here to do good work for the rest of humanity, but they know, they have an instinctive knowing of exactly what, they, exactly what they're here to do. And what I notice with a lot of Aquarians is that, yeah, they can be contrary, but a lot of them are have very specific talents that they hone and they don't quit honing. So if you've got a problem with an Aquarius, you have a problem with your place in the world, you haven't found your groove yet, you're still trying to find yourself and you clearly haven't found out who you are. So... That's the problem with you if you if you have a problem in Aquarius. Oh, and another thing, you're too focused on what other people think of you. You're too focused on what other people think of you. And you're too, you know, you might actually be the type of person you trust to boss people around if you don't like an Aquarius too much. And with Pisces, if you don't like Pisces, then you... Have trouble letting go of things. Now with Pisces, not going to lie, they can be kind of bitchy. But they can also let go of things. They don't hold on to things as much as people think. They're very obsessed with fairness, yes. But at a certain point, they're able to let go of things. They say things, then let them go. What I notice about people who don't like Pisces, they kind of... They might actually like to hold grudges, people who don't like Pisces. They might like to hold grudges. They might like to be too rigid about what they do. They might like to try to control every single little facet of what somebody does or what they do. So there's an issue with control with people who don't like Pisces. There's an issue with not letting things go. Because Pisces, the 12th house, both of them represent the subconscious. So we have a problem with our deeper selves when we have a problem with Pisceans. We have a problem with who we truly are inside. 
which is where our sage is. But we will never get to that enlightenment and wisdom if we don't accept what our subconscious has to say. And not all of those things are going to be nice. I'm just going to say it. So those are my 12 signs. The sign that you have a problem with reveals something about you. Now, I've got my signs that I like and I've got my signs that I don't. But the thing is, is that I always try to work on every single facet of who I am as a person. So I'm getting better. But anyway, I've been Empress Justice. Those are the 12 signs that what your, what the signs that you don't get along with reveal about you. Those are my 12. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.